Well, Roy, do you know all there is to know about relining a set of Plymouth brakes? Maybe not all, Dave, but I sure know more than I did before. Roy's going to make a pretty good mechanic, Dave. He catches on quick. Not so fast, Ben. There's still one thing I didn't quite follow. Just which operation wasn't clear, Roy? Well, Tech, before Ben relined the brakes, he replaced the inner and outer seals on the axle shafts. He seemed awfully anxious to do that first. You'd be anxious too, my boy. I've learned the hard way that replacing those seals is darn good insurance. I don't want the owner coming back and chewing me out because grease got on the new brake lining. Ben's right. Good seals are important at that point and at a lot of other places. I kind of think that seals are overlooked sometimes by mechanics who ought to know better. Ah, you're so right, Tech. I'll go get a batch of new seals from the parts department and go into that story for Roy's benefit. I second that motion, Dave. There might be a few new seals that even I don't know about. Now, here are most of the seals. <laughs> Quite a few different kinds to keep in mind, eh? Boy, I'll say. Some of those look alike. How can you tell them apart? Well, Roy, there are actually two main types that we're concerned with. The rotating shaft seals, like the rear axle shaft seals you and Ben replaced, and static seals. A static seal is that gasket between the cylinder head and the block. Hole plugs or any paper, cork, rubber, fiber, or other type gasket are also examples of static seals. I get you. Now, that rotating shaft type seal... Uh, that's the one that's complicated, right? Oh, I don't think that type's so complicated, Roy. Let's take a look at them. Most of these seals on the bench are the rotating shaft type. It's one of the main kinds in use on our cars. There are three different kinds of rotating shaft seals. For example, these encased seals are the main kind we'll be concerned with. Second, there's this split seal you'll find used at the engine rear main bearing. In addition... There's a face-type seal used on the fluid drive unit. Now, uh, that about covers the three main kinds of rotating shaft seals. I see. Encased, split-type, and face-type seals. Three main kinds. That's the idea. Now, uh, you can always tell the encased seal by the metal container. The sealing part can be leather or synthetic rubber, spring-loaded or not. What's the uh, main reason for the container? That holds the seal in shape. On some shafts, there's a normal runout of a half to one and a half thousandths. So the seal needs a strong steel girdle to stay in shape. Right, Tech. Now, uh, besides that, the metal container allows for easy removal and installation of the seal. Where do all those seals go, anyway? Well, at the front wheel inner bearing, for one. As inner and outer seals at the rear axle shaft bearings. And at the rear axle pinion shaft front bearing, to name a few. Now, uh, besides that, you find encased seals used on both the standard and hydraulically operated transmissions, also on the overdrive unit. Yeah, Roy, and another place for that type of seal is on the torque converter. Now, here's how that converter seal looks. Golly, that's a popular type seal, all right. But how come some are leather and others synthetic rubber? Yeah, that's a good question, Roy. In general, rubber and leather seals stand up about the same, but... Where hypoid lubricants are used, there's a chemical action on rubber. Say, that's something I never knew, Dave. Now, why does that happen? Well, hypoid lubes are made with either active sulfur or chlorine to provide the high-pressure characteristics necessary for lubricating hypoid gears. But those chemicals tend to react with synthetic rubber and cut down the life of the seal. That's why you find that a seal in direct contact with hypoid lubricant is usually made of leather. The pinion shaft front bearing seal and the rear axle inner seal are examples. Yeah, and remember this. Just any old leather seal won't do. You gotta use leather seals that are engineered for the job. And that is a vital point, fellas. The leather used on our seals is chrome tan. Now, oh, that's a special process which produces the required sealing properties. Chrome tanning is something you can't see by just looking at the seal. It, it takes chemical analysis. Now, what's more, we use a good grade of leather with a high percentage of natural oils. That keeps the seal soft and pliable. So always use the approved type seals and be sure. Okay, I'm convinced, Dave. Fine. Now, uh, just remember that some shafts which operate in these seals turn at high speeds. 
That could cause the lip of the seal to be thrown away from the shaft. Forcing away the lip would let lubricant leak out. Now, that's why additional pressure is provided by a garter spring behind the lip to keep it tightly against the turning surface. Another thing, dirt can be very harmful to the transmission or overdrive rear bearing and to the pinion shaft bearing. So, a felt washer is built into those seals to keep dirt out. Hmm. Frankly, can a little dirt really be that bad? You bet your life, my boy. Let Ben tell you about an engine front oil seal he replaced a little while back. Oh, yeah, Tech. That job was a humdinger, all right. You see, Roy, the owner was noticing an oil spot on the driveway or in the garage every time he parked the car. Now, what happened was some dirt got in and cut two grooves in the crankshaft pulley hub. I saved those old parts so I could show you what dirt can do when it gets into an oil seal. Here are those old parts. You notice the grooves? Well, that's how serious a little dirt can be. I see your point okay. That hub's been cut like it would be by a tool on a lathe. Yeah, Roy. And that's why you'd better keep those seals absolutely clean whenever you install them. We'll say more about that later. Yeah, that we will, Tech. Meanwhile, let me mention that there are spring-loaded rubber seals at the torque converter impeller hub and the converter turbine shaft. Both places have high temperatures and high rotating speeds. In fact, wherever rotating shaft speeds are high and run-out is a factor, that garter spring's an important part of the seal. Now, Roy, Ben and I had better give you some tips on removing, inspecting, and installing seals correctly. Swell. I don't even know which end is up on seals. Okay. Now, you remove a seal whenever it's been damaged by foreign matter or a rough rotating surface. Any time you remove a seal, replace it with a new one. Incorrect installation can cause a seal to fail. Or improper handling in stock might have damaged a seal that was installed. And don't forget, Roy, even though all seals look alike, there are important differences. Each seal is engineered for a special job. If you use the wrong seal, wham, expensive parts might be damaged. Check and double check, Tech. You got that, Roy? Okay. I'll be sure to use the right seals. Atta boy. Now, always remove a seal carefully. To help you do that, there are special tools you should use for removing and installing seals. They prevent gouging or nicking the bore or shaft and guarantee proper installation of the new seal. Okay, Dave. Incidentally, use a threaded puller like this to remove a transmission or overdrive main shaft seal or the pinion shaft seal. In addition, after you remove any seal, always clean the bore or shaft thoroughly. Then you can see if there's any wear or damage. Now, if a shaft looks rough, smooth it up so it won't tear the new seal. If it won't smooth up, install a new shaft. Putting a new seal on a rough shaft doesn't pay. Hey, somebody better turn this record over or this needle's gonna go wild. There's no seal around that hole in the middle. Now, uh, is there anything else on inspection, Dave? Oh, yes, sirree. Don't overlook a worn or oversized bore. A new seal won't correct that. A good clue to wear is how easily the old seal came out. All seals should have a snug fit. In addition, always inspect a new seal carefully before installation. The container should be round and the surface is flat for proper seating. Improper handling in the part spin can sometimes nick and scratch the outer seal case. Now, that could let oil leak out around the container. Right, Roy. Check the lip of that seal especially. It's got to be free from nicks, tears, or any uneven places. Now, if it's a leather seal, make sure there are no cracks or curled edges. Yeah, and that leather's got to be soft and pliable so it can fit like a tight girdle. Right. And when you know a leather seal's gonna need replacement, drop the new seal in light oil to soak for about 30 minutes while you're getting the job ready for installation. That makes the leather pliable. After the soaking, roll a round, smooth bar around the lip a few times. That helps the seal conform to the shape of the shaft. Golly, there's a lot of get-ready stuff on seals. Oh, sure. But it all pays off. Installation also calls for extra care. 
there's a special driver available for practically every seal installation. There's flat face driver, for instance, as designed to put equal pressure across the full face of the seal. Yeah, Roy. And if I catch you using any kind of a pointed drift, I'd use it on your foot. A drift can not only wrinkle the container and wreck the seal, but it usually leads to a do-over job for free. Okay, Tech. I sure don't want any comeback jobs. Attaboy, Roy. Now, when that transmission main shaft rear bearing seal is installed, it should project slightly from the face of the housing. If the seal is driven too far into the bore, the seal lip will not run on the ground part of the shaft. That could cause a leak. So use this approved driver to position the transmission seal correctly. Good point. And during installation, remember to place the seal squarely in the bore with the seal lip toward the lubricant. That lip acts as a scraper to keep the lube from working out. Yeah, Dave. You gotta be careful not to install that seal backwards by mistake. It'll go on, but it won't seal. So keep that lip pointed toward the lubricant. Okay, Tech, will do. Another tip, Roy. Always protect a seal you're installing over sharp splines or a sharp keyway. Wrap the shaft with tape or use a sleeve. boy, Ben. Now, let's talk about the new type seal being used at the chain case cover on our new six and eight cylinder engines. It's a spring-loaded synthetic rubber seal and has a built-in steel oil trough located on the inside face. Yeah, and that brings up a point. The trough on the V8 engine seal is a little wider than that on the six-cylinder seal, but both troughs act as drains to keep oil from the lip of the seal. Right. Now, this seal is pressed into the chain case cover seal pocket. There's a gasket used between the seal and cover. Now, by the way, two types of seals are used. One has a rubber gasket molded to the case of the seal. The other doesn't have the molded gasket, so it requires a separate paper gasket. I see. An oil slinger is used with that new type cover seal, Roy. It's a separate cup assembled between the chain sprocket and crankshaft pulley hub. The cupped part faces the radiator. When oil hits the slinger, the centrifugal force directs the oil away from the seal, and it drains back through the trough. Good going, Ben. And with that seal, Roy, there's a felt washer assembled on the back face of the crankshaft pulley. It turns with the pulley and keeps dirt and water out of the seal. Yeah, Roy. That felt is held by a metal retainer welded to the pulley. Three prongs bent out from the retainer drive the washer around. The rear face of the washer works against the front face of the chain cover seal pocket. Proper compression of the washer, therefore, is mighty important. In other words, if too thick a washer is used, it'll burn up because of the friction. So always use a replacement washer of the right thickness. I was just going to ask, Dave, how you go about removing and installing that uh, new type cover oil seal? Well, to begin with, be careful not to damage the cover when you drive out the old seal. Then remove the paper gasket, if one were used, and carefully clean out the pocket so the new gasket and seal will have a good seat. Install a new gasket unless you use a seal with the molded on type. An extra gasket here will cause interference that will really sound off. And install that seal with the seal lip toward the oil. Next, use this special driver to wrap the seal home into the pocket. Yeah, Roy. Then install the slinger and a new felt washer. Seat the washer firmly in the retainer and put Mopar Lubriplate on the contact surface. Incidentally, this new type cover oil seal fits only the 53 model engines. Okay, I got you. Fine. Now... Our six-cylinder engines use a split or two-piece synthetic rubber seal at the rear main bearing. Now, here's what I mean. Notice that steel insert molded into the seal? That's for added strength and rigidity. Notice also that the upper and lower halves are channeled. That's so they'll fit over the flanges on the cylinder block rear face and rear main bearing cap. This scraper lip on the inside keeps oil from working by the seal, Roy. In addition, there's a two-piece bearing cap gasket between the block and cap. I see. 
Anything special on removal and installation? There sure is, my boy. Never replace only one half of that seal. Always use both new seals and the two gaskets that come in the rear main bearing seal package. Then you'll be sure to do a good job. Tax right. Now, here's how you remove the seal. Remove the bearing cap first. Then, use a screwdriver on one end to turn the upper seal out of its channel so you can pull it out. Next, lift the lower half of the seal from the cap. Discard both old seal sections and gaskets. Use a clean cloth and a wire to clean the seal channel thoroughly. Just work the cloth back and forth. Before installing a new seal, Roy, coat the scraper lip with lubricant to avoid scoring the crankshaft. Right. Then, with the lip toward the bearing, feed the seal into its upper channel. Lubricant on the outer seal surface makes installation easier. Push the upper seal into place around the crankshaft. Install the lower seal in the bearing cap, keeping the scraper lip toward the bearing. Coat the undersides of the cap gaskets with a quick-drying sealer and put them in the cap. Be sure the gasket tabs fit snugly into the seal channel. Line up the outside gasket edge with the step on the cap. Yeah, and if there's a little extra piece of gasket sticking out, don't trim it off. Just press it down firmly into the cap channel. Tex right, Roy. Finally, tighten the main bearing cap bolts 80 to 85 foot-pounds. Here's something else, Roy. A knurl on the rear of the crankshaft bearing journal opposite the seal is no longer used. So you can't use an early model crankshaft in a 53 model block. And don't put the new rear main bearing seal in a past model engine. And said another way, Roy, the former rope type seal like this is not interchangeable with that rubber seal. If you just follow the parts list specified for the model you're working on, you'll do all right. You'll find details on that rope type seal and other seals in this reference book, Roy. Swell, Dave. There sure is a lot to know about seals. That there is, Roy. And remember, seals don't cost much, but they do run up a labor bill. So do each seal job right. After all, if an owner has to lay up his car a second time, he isn't going to like it or you either. So follow Dave's advice and you'll build a reputation for top quality service.